Hi everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Thank you so much for being here today. If you're seeing me on YouTube, I do have a blog, it's stampbesilly.com. My email address, if you need to reach me, is jandufour at yahoo.com. If you don't have an independent demonstrator already, I'd be happy to send you catalogs. Just email me at that address. If you'd like to shop online, you can go to my store at jandufour.stampinup.net. Today, we're continuing the series of the little sweet songbird. Sweet songbird is the name of the, the um, show you the stamp set. Uh, two weeks ago, I showed you Give It a Whirl, and that was to make a card uh, that had an interactive part to it. Then, last week, I made little gift cards to give to that shower recipient. Um, and uh, we made 20 of them all at the same time. And now we're making a box that we can put the note cards in, uh, in order to keep them together. So we're gonna make this, we're actually making the actual opposite of that, which I do often, I always make multiples, as you know, if you followed me at all. And it's just as easy to make a couple at the same time. So we'll put that aside. The top and the bottom are identical. I have, except in size. Um, I have a template, which will be down below if you're on YouTube and will be on my website, where you can print off. The gray areas are cut out. The red is tear and tape. And the size is here. And then the layers for the top um, are here. Oh, let me take these off here. Um, and we'll put those aside. So they're made exactly the same way. So I'm only gonna make the top for you. Um, I'll give you the measurements though for the base, which I already have made, is seven and three quarters by nine and a quarter. You score at one and two on all four sides. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this one. The measurements are just different. This is six and three eighths by seven and seven eighths. And we're gonna score, um, again, that score, not cut, score at five eighths and one and a quarter. So five eighths is two lines past one half. So we're gonna score that. And then we're gonna score at one and a quarter, which is right here on, if you have the stamp trimmer. Um, when I'm doing small under a, a, an inch and a half, I always go to the left because this has more space to rest upon and chances are it will stay straighter than if you try to go the other way with most of the paper hanging off. So again, five eighths and one and a quarter. Try your best to be accurate on this. Take your time and you'll see me like I'll go to the mark and then I kind of rock it to make sure. Oops, I already did that side. Um, I rock it to make sure that I am doing it as close to the exact measurement as possible. It's particularly important when you're doing a box um, that has a lid because you want the lid to fit. Um, so we've got three sides down. Again, we're doing five eighths and one and a quarter. Okay, again, exact same thing as we did on the other, um, on the bottom, we're gonna do at the top. So we're gonna fold and burnish. Uh, burnish just means to make sure it's very well flattened and you do that with a bone folder if you don't have a bone folder you can use a credit card or some other straight edged object that can press down on it it just helps with um, the cutting and then the folding and pasting later on if you have a nice crisp edge so we're doing all four sides and then i'm going to bring the template back in to show you the areas that we're gonna cut out. Um, those are in gray. So laying it so that the longer edge is along the top, take your snips 
and <clears throat> you can cut it any way you want. If you don't do boxes often, I'm gonna show you on this side how I would do that for you. I would just take out these two boxes first, right here, and I would cut that and remove it. And do a, not a, try to repeat your movement so that uh, you're less apt to do something wrong. Then I would cut up these two boxes. So I would cut up along here. This is gonna become the flap. And I would cut this one out. So as you can see, it's not to scale, but you've got these two and this one out. So I will go back on the other side. Did I cut up? Yeah. Cut up this one. And then cut this one out. And then we're going to do these um, little bits that we take out so that um, it's a wedge or um, a notch, I've heard it called. And we're going to do it in all of the places. So we're going to do, and it's just, okay, try to catch it at the same time. It's just a very small piece. Um, and that just helps with folding. So this flap has it on both sides. I didn't see that come out, but it did apparently. Oh, it's stuck to my scissors. Um, so both of these sides are notched. Again, we'll go to this one. And notch out this. Notch out this. And notch this. Again, just a sliver. Just helps with the folding. Um, so now when you put it down, you see daylight in between here. Uh, again, this is not to size, but... Um, you can see how that they're notched in. Once you get comfortable doing that, <clears throat> when I do the other side, I'll show you how I usually do it because again, I make boxes a lot. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I got a frog in my throat. Allergies in Louisville, Kentucky are rampant right now. So I would cut both of these at the same time. When I cut this line though, I'm already gonna notch it because I know that one's getting notched. I would go straight up for this one and notch it right away. And then I would notch this side and cut this one out. Obviously there's fewer cuts, so it goes faster. Not that fast is the up objective, but um, it does help when you're making a bunch of these or um, we'll go up, notch notch and cut out. This is also notched. So this little piece has two notches. There's the notch on this side and on that side, but I cut it out all at once and it makes it kind of a funny shape. Put my scissors aside, get rid of my scraps so they don't distract you. All right, so now we're gonna place, oops, got a stray one. We're gonna place the tear and tape down um, tear and tape will hold the flap down. You could glue it. Um, there's nothing wrong with gluing this down after when we get to that part. Um, tear and tape is a, a little bit faster because you don't have to hold it. Um, when we do the flaps, you'll see that there's a, a little bit of time because you have to wait for the glue to at least set up. It doesn't have to be completely dried and you'll see how quickly that goes. Um, but, you know, sometimes every little saving time is great. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. Then I always tell people burnish your tear and tape because you wanna pull up that top layer. And sometimes, and this may have happened to you, um, both layers try to pull up and then you start tearing your cardstock. So um, don't lose your bone folder, you're gonna need it again soon. So again, this is exactly the way I made the bottom. It's just different measurements. So the first thing we're gonna do is add glue to the um, tabs. Doesn't need a lot of glue. Um, and the way I do it is I put it together, as you can see here, and then I hold one finger on the inside, one on the outside, I wipe away any glue and I just hold it, pinch it for a second. Okay, I lied. 
maybe 10 seconds. <laughs> and that's gonna be good enough to move on. Now, some people like to take the tear and tape off first. Um, and then you have to deal with, you know, getting your fingers stuck. For me, I just as soon, and with glue, you have a little bit of time. As you can see, I moved that around a little bit, but I'm just pressing on both sides just for a few seconds so that it can set up. Now, again, it's not completely dry, but it's, it's enough dry so that you can go to the next step then do the next corner. I'm gonna put that on here. Again, fold to the edge. Remove any squeezed out glue. It dries clear, so it's not a problem. Finger on both sides, inside and outside, just for a few seconds till that sets up. Of course, I got glue on my other hand. And then we're gonna move to the last one. The last one might be a little bit tricky. Pull it out and put a little bit of glue, whoops, a little bit of glue on it. Probably a little bit more than I needed. That's okay. And then you can pull it in here and get those corners just as nice and crisp as you can. You don't want to overdo it uh, because you don't want anything to be over here. So don't like pull it in further. I don't want to do that because it's almost dry. <clears throat> so just a few seconds and then that's dried enough to, to be able to go to the next part. Now I kind of bend these back. Again, you could have taken it off before um, and then dealt with sticking a little bit as you were actually putting the glue on. But um, this works fine for me. Um, my nails, I just had them done, which is great, but it makes them very short. <laughs> and I'm not, not quite able. There we go. I grab that, grab that tear and tape. Sometimes I use a pin that works a little bit better because this is a little bit of a thick, um, uh, you know what, I'm gonna use my pin. I like my pin. <laughs> pin gets in underneath there really easily. Pull that one off. And then I will show you your your flaps that you glued are on the ends. Oops. All right. So the flaps are on the inside here. So I fold the ends one end ones down first, so that we make sure those are closed in well. And I pour pour in the insides. And then the last thing I do, let me get rid of this, is I take my bone folder, I push, and I, I don't know what I'm doing is I'm laying it flat, but putting this in each corner, sliding and going to the other corner. It's kind of at an angle, so you can't really see it, but that'll keep your corners nice and crisp. Um, and you can see, maybe you can see, on the inside here, this was a little bit long, so it kind of goes around the top. It won't bother it because, again, I burnished it in, so it'll be nice and flat. All right, so here's the trial. Here we go. This is the bottom. This is the top. Oops, got it down too far. That side's a little tight, but it's fine. Put it on and take it off a couple of times and that will loosen up. Um, some of them, some people have measurements that are a little bit smaller than that and to, it's too tight a fit. You know, we know how to put top on boxes that we've made, Would you know, give it a little push in the corner, but um, other people don't and I just don't want them and it stays on real well. All right, so now we're going to decorate the top. I'm going to need my glue in a minute. Um, I have all the measurements of what's cut. Um, the basic white is three and a half by five. The solid card cardstock, and again, I'm doing the opposite of this one. So this is uh, Tahitian Tide, one of our new in colors. 
I did the whole series in the new in colors. Of course, you can use any colors you like. And then this is the DSP. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you the. It's three and three eighths by four and seven eighths for the solid. Then the DSP is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And that goes right on here. Of course, I don't have it glued right, but I will do that. Um, and then you just need a small piece um, for the frame that comes um, in the dies called uh, potted succulents. So there's a couple of frames in here and then they have, let me show you, these two frames, a small one and a larger one. Let me put this aside. And I've gone ahead and stamped it ahead of time. Um, again, just for ease of working. If you're wondering what this is, this is for my my mini stamp cut and emboss, which I can kind of leave on my desk because when I'm not using it, let me show you again. It's, it's very nice and small. Um, so then uh, we also need a few dimensionals and I added some um, thread. So let's go ahead and put that together. Let's start, um, let me put my pin away friendly pin that I use all the time. Let's start um, with the Tahitian blue. And there's no um, pressure or pulling on this, so I don't tend to put maybe quite as much glue because you really don't need it unless there's a lot of tension on the area that you're... Oops the area that you're working on. So I always say, if you've got three sides, one, two, and you see three here, then your fourth side will be right. So you don't have to struggle so hard, especially when you've got um, such small um, dimensions difference. It's easier when there's a larger difference because you can fudge it a little bit more, but it's again about getting one, two, it's that one, that one's not quite right. One, two and three, and there you have it. I'll turn it over. Just give it a nice push there. And then when you put it on the, you, you could have decorated it before um, you put it all together, but it's just as easy for me to do this um, because there's multiple layers, I am going to put just a little bit more in the center. I'm going to put it on here. There's more of a border, as you can see, on this one. Oops. And because I'm not pushing it down, I have time to play with it. I'm kind of just gently putting it down. I'm going to flip it over, and I know that it didn't move because it was already partially stuck. And that way you can get a good solid grip. Then I'm gonna take, whoops. This is Tahitian blue metallic, um, eighth of an inch. I, I love eighth of an inch and quarter of an inch because it's great for tying bows. Um, this particular one happened to be a boy. So although baby boys can have bows, um, I just decided not to use a bow on it. So I'm gonna just put this down and then I'm gonna wrap it around twice, keeping my, my uh, ribbon flat. And then I'm gonna bring it around to the back. Before I cut it, I'm gonna go ahead and get it stuck down. So now I've got it trapped. Let me cut this off. And then you can adjust it a little bit so it's where you want it, like this. And then we're gonna take a little note of thanks. I thought that was appropriate for having um, thank you cards in there. And we're gonna put this right in the center. It also traps the ribbon. And then you take the pop dots off. My fingers have got glue on them. 
making things difficult. Oops, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> and then you can place that right in the center. Again, if you want to press it a little bit harder, you can turn it over. And there you have another box to put, oops, no cards in. And there you go. All the way around. I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a comment below and let me know. If there's anything else you wanna see, let me know that as well. If you would subscribe, go ahead and click the, the bell and the subscribe button and you'll get notified when I post another um, video, which is generally about once a week. Occasionally, and it's not even once a month, I might send a new, an extra, um, kind of a salesy kind of thing. It's usually things like a flash sale on no, ma uh, no mailing cost, which everybody wants to know because that saves you 11%. Um, but, but generally, that's less than once a month. So thanks again for joining me. If you're on YouTube, go to my blog, stampmesilly.com. If you are interested in getting information, getting a catalog, asking questions, email me at jandufour at yahoo.com. And my online store is jandufour.stampinup.net. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.